So it's pretty easy to get confused when you're first looking at data models, migrations, and the database itself. And so I want to go through this in a little bit more detail. So the make migrations is what reads the models.py files, and then it creates what are called migrations. And the key thing is, is this is guided by the list of applications in settings.py. So if you make a new thing and make a new application, and you edit the model stop file and you try to run and make migrations and it doesn't see anything, you're like, what did it just do? Well, did you edit your settings.py? Because there is a thing called installed apps in your settings.py. Now, migrations are portable across databases. This means that the migration is a logical description of what the tables should look like. And they're an evolution. What they mean is like, the first version of this table from the first models.py when migrations was first run is 001. And then if you change models.py and you run a migration again, it looks at the changes from the migration 001 to models.py and then 002. And then 002 is not like wipe it all out and start over. It's like, oh wait, you just added one column. I'll go ahead and add that column. But it's not done it in a way that's actual SQL. So migrations are themselves kind of Python-like. And they're portable across databases, which means that you might, on your computer, use SQLite, and in production you might use MySQL, and the migrations are the same for both of them, because they're just saying, here's the columns, here's the types, here's what they're supposed to be. Now, that's compare, contrast that with a migration, migrate command. The migrate command reads all the migrations, and then knows what database it's talking to, and runs the SQL commands to create the necessary tables, and or evolve the necessary tables. So it looks and says, oh, here's the first migration, here's the second migration, here's the third migration. I'll make the table, I'll change the table, I'll change the table, I'll change the table. And at the end of all the migration, uh, uh, the migrate then goes through all the migrations and then has a, a database table that reflects the sum total of the migrations, which also reflects the latest data, mo the latest models.py file. So, it, it, it's a little complex. It has to do with database portability and the fact that we want to separate out the portable parts of this for the non, from the non-portable parts to this. So if you look at the make migrations, and here's in DJ Free Samples, my little sample stuff, there's lots of models in there. And if you take a look at all the models.py, you see that for every application in the DJ Free Samples project, you see a models.py file. And that's a Python code, that's class, book, blah, 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 that's very portable, and that's how we, in our Python code, in our Django code, see the database model. And when you run the make migration, that produces these migrations files. And they're just in, like, autos migrations, 001 initial.py, et cetera. And so see, you see some of the ones I have here, there's actually two of them. So it sort of made the first one, and then, it, then I must have changed the models file, and then I ran make migrations again, and it showed, it, it recorded how that model changed from the first version of the models file to the second version. If you can look at these, don't edit them, don't, you can check them into GitHub, you, but don't edit these, but take a look. They're a very portable representation. They kind of look like the models.py file. You're not supposed to change them, you're supposed to generate them with make migrations. And again, those can go into GitHub. Now, the migrate, basically reads all those migration files. And not just one, but if there's a sequence of migration files, it applies them all in order as needed. And if the database has the first and second migration applied, but not the third one, it knows that and says, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna just tweak this database that already exists, that's already running, and then add a column or change the width of a column or whatever it is that you've asked to be done by editing your models.py. So when the migra migrate is done, you then end up with a whole bunch of tables in your database. And they're all based on the name of the application and the name of the, ta the model within the application. And so somewhere in here is uh, book one book, book one instance, and book one lang. Those are all sitting there. And so those are all the tables. And we took a look at those tables before, but that's the migrate. It, it, that goes from all the little migrations spread across all of the applications in this project and then puts a database together that has all those things. And I keep saying that the migrations are all about evolution, right? Because if you take a look here, you see one little table called Django Migrations, 
And what Django is doing in that Django migrations table is remembering which of those migrations have already been applied to this database. So as it's going through the migrations, it says, oh, here's one that's not yet done in this database, so I got to tweak the database just a little bit. So it, it remembers the migrations that have been done. It's pretty fascinating, and in these little tiny applications, we, we don't always need to be so clever about that. <laughs> so sometimes what you want to do is just like, hmm, I'm confused. I'm going to rerun the make migrate. Because you're not really running production, you're just really doing it over and over again. So you can rerun the make migrate. And the way you do this is you basically simply delete the file. You go, you can delete these files. I would delete all the ones that start with zero, right? If you're going to rerun make migrate, just uh, make rerun make migrations. Um, delete all the ones that start with zero. Just in, and this is in application migrations, and then get rid of all these. And then you can rerun the migrate, make migrations, and it will read your models.py file, and then it will do all of the necessary things to recreate the migration file. Right now, that's not the database. That is the instructions on how to create the database. Okay, so that's how you rerun make migrate. You can run migrate from scratch. This is actually easier. So you can kind of wipe out the migrations for one application, and I did that just wiped out the book one here. That's what I did and started over. But you can wipe out the entire, all the migrations and all the database and everything by just removing the file, in this case, because we're running SQLite. Just wipe out the file rmdb.sqlite, because after migrate, that's where everything ends up, is in that file. So then you wipe that out, it's gone. Now, you might have created an administrator account or something, and you're going to wipe that out too. You're going to wipe the data out. You're going to wipe the tables out. It's all gone. That's one thing I like about SQLite. You remove this one file and it's literally all gone. And then you rerun Python Manage 3 Migrate and it reads all the migrations and makes you a nice, clean, perfect, empty database. So if you're kind of stuck and you're not afraid of losing your data, which in most of the beginning programmers, it's okay to wipe out your SQLite thing and run Migrate again. Just go ahead and try it. Like I said, if you made an admin account, well, you got to make it again. But that's the worst that you can do. So, um, at least in these beginning applications. So now that we've talked about how to come up with a data model, how to encode it in Django model.py, how to do migrations and how to migrate stuff and how to make a database out of it, now we're going to talk about the kind of Python code that you can run to update these models in the database.